ESPN presents Outside the Lines. Howard Cosell, his life and times with Robert Lipson. I think the thing that when the people really began to sit up and take notice of you was the way that you began to bedevil poor Casey Stengel in ways that people hadn't really approached sports legends before. Well, you used the word bedevil. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I never thought I bedeviled Casey Stengel. I thought Casey Stengel bedeviled young people. And I couldn't bear it. I saw him take kids named Harkness and Burright, and he bedeviled them. He had a right to, I suppose, in a free society, broadly speaking, about freedom of speech. You didn't like Casey Stengel? No, because I thought he hurt young people needlessly. And I thought he propagandized himself. And yet, and yet he was certainly a hero and an instant legend was among a, the he, press. Of course. He was a creation of the press. And he played to them very, very straightforwardly. I mean, my writers, my writers, my writers. I, uh, that was the beginnings of my differences with the sports print medium. And I took it very seriously because I didn't want to see young people hurt. I uh, I've never made this public. Bing Devine knows that what I'm telling you is true. And he came to me one day and he said, Howard, I think you can help me because my hands are tied. I can't be accused of, excuse me, of uh, tampering. He said, I want Gil Hodges to be my manager. Gil was with Washington at the time. And I spoke to Gil and asked him if he'd like to manage the Mets. And the answer was yes. And so, you know... Wait a minute. You're a sports reporter. That's correct. You entered into the industry. You tampered. You talked to <laughs> Gil Hodges you know, to ask if he wanted to become manager of the Mets. You were operating not as a reporter. Not only were you operating under the table for management, but you were trying to replace Casey Stengel, a legend, a beloved American hero, <laughs> whom you personally disliked. How do you justify that? Your words are so hypocritical. I went through this garbage with you when I brought you up to Yale to speak to my class. I don't think we've and discussed this And you talked to before. me about we ambivalence. We've never discussed this before. Of course we did. And you talked to me about ambivalence, and you accused me of ambivalence. And I said you had a point, because, you see, I am unfortunately a human being, too, and I care about human beings. And the one thing I take from sports and have always taken from sports, are human beings. And I will always consider myself a human being who has taken people from sports. Now, have I done things that are not consistent totally with what a pure journalist, if there is such a thing, is to be? I suppose I have deviated. I don't apologize for that. I did things that I believed in, that I believed were right. I believed it was right for Gil Hodges to manage the Mets. I believed it would help the Mets. I believed that he would become a very significant factor in their successes. And he did. I believed he was a fine man. I knew he was a fine man. I did not believe in Casey Stengel, which is totally irrelevant. I believe that Casey Stengel hurt young people, and I think that anybody with honesty knew that. And he hurt them and hurt them severely. But Casey Stengel's legend was built by people that I disrespected, people of the sports print medium. 
and I didn't think they were servicing the public properly in what they were doing. I happened to be a terribly, terribly bright man, and I knew the people I was dealing with. You and also I knew are a I was terribly doing... arrogant man, and we're talking now about Cosell's law. You are above the law, and you're a lawyer yet. Oh, that's garbage, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to hear you talk that way. There is a very good parallel today. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what that parallel is. The parallel is Phil Pepe and Jack Lang, for instance, fighting desperately for their right to vote for Pete Rose to be in the Hall of Fame. It's a very apt parallel. They're concerned with their right to vote. That's interference with a private business. And I was an antidote to that. I don't apologize for it. I'm proud of it. Period. Thirty years ago, when you were an antidote to this, were you a self-conscious antidote to this, or did you enter into a field wh whose rules you didn't know and adhere to? How did you see yourself? How did I see myself? I saw myself as a person who wanted to bring to public attention that which I thought was wrong. Nothing more, no less than that. No great shakes about that. Never thought of myself as anything else but. Did you think of that as that was going to be your ticket? Oh, come on. That sports writer's garbage. They pull that garbage. Don't you pull it? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you say? What do I say? I say I did the right things. You always did the right things. I did what I believed in. 